Hello everybody, how you all doing? My name is Raffle and welcome to today's video. Today I have another solo legendary build for you. This time is a hybrid build with high or decent weapon damage and pretty decent heals. Uh, I wanted to create a build which has okay damage, okay armor and okay heals. Those builds are the hardest in my opinion to put together simply because you need to find the perfect battle balance between all three. Otherwise, the build is simply gonna fail. Before uh, the video moves any forward, I wanna make clear that there are much better solo legendary builds that somebody can play with. I've posted some of them on, on my channel. I will have all of them down below in the description. This build, even though it is possible to clear legendaries, as you're about to see, it's not the most optimal build, so to say. Um, I just had this weird obsession for months uh, that I wanted to clear a legendary all by myself with a hybrid build that gives me heals. That's it. That was like a personal challenge. I finally managed to complete it and that's why uh, I'm making this video. So I'm gonna stop talking for now. I'm gonna let you watch the rest of the gameplay. As I said, it is from my stream. So yeah, some things I'm about to say probably won't make a lot of sense to you because you weren't reading the chat, but yeah. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, I'll talk to you in a bit when we move on to the build part of the video. Jesus Christ, my... No ammo box, no healing box for you? No. It's not that important though because you have more healers apparently oh no we didn't take it down yeah you're not gonna arrest them Getting healed back there, which is great. Okay, you might rest them, I guess. Jeez, my level 31 is better than that. Fuck off, dude. <laughs> okay. <laughs> The funny thing is that I actually believe you. We're not wiping here. Bring more. Bring more. Where the fuck did you go? That was definitely a hit. How many you got? Oh, okay. Sanga is coming. I think I timed that right. Yeah. <laughs> That's one. That's two magazines. And that's dead. Uh, let's 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 go boys. Oh, he saw me too early. We're good, we're good, we're good. We haven't killed shit yet. Oh, I have the Scorpio, fuck. He's gonna throw grenades now. Yeah. Here we go. Suppress that fucker. He's going down again. Let's 
gonna make me do this. Fuck off. Okay, no more wheels for you. Can the mechanic repair the wheels as well? Yes, it can, apparently. So I'm just pushing. Should be good, it's just the red guy. The mechanic is dead, if I remember correctly. Okay. Destroy our seeker, real quick. I wanna pick that memento trophy real quick. Are they coming out yet? No, they're not. Oh shit. Okay. You can do this all day, buddy. When it's just you, have no issues. Low on AR bullets, that's bad. I always forget that the crossbow has a... Uh, that was good. Press backpack down. Second backpack down. Scorpio, baby. Mechanic. They start start sending me those drones. Let's see them. That backpack is gone. Ooh, can I get that backpack though? Yeah, you're not gonna stay there, buddy. No way in hell. Oh, really? Nope. Where's the second drone? Ah, too late. That's dead. My guy's dead. Second wave should be coming out now. Shotgun nurse. Healing box is down. That guy died from the drones. Great. Running low on ammo here. I think I'm going to take down that turret and then move to pick some ammo up. Mm. 
new wave is out grenadiers thank god we got all that bony summer Boys, don't do this to me now. That red guy needs to die immediately. He's dead. He's dead. Let's get both of them there. And there's black up. This guy is too close to throw grenades. Thank God. Fuck me. Is that it? We good? Last guy here? Right? Oh, I, I hope to God I'm not wrong. Yeah. Yes, sir. Have FPS drops here. Yes. Okay, let's get some more room between me and them. Who the fuck is that guy? Oh, he's behind that wall. This guy doesn't want to go down. Is he pushing me? Oh, the balls. On this chick. Hello? I'm fucking stupid. That bitch! <laughs> I'm not even mad, dude. I deserve this shit. Uh, <laughs> they didn't do shit. As soon as I tried to approach with my fucking Scorpio. She takes out two fucking drones, like, fuck off, dude. Die, please. Okay, we did it. Took us, uh, two hours and 48 minutes. Wiped four or five times. And one before the stream started, but we did it. So let's talk about the build before we actually get into that. Let me just repeat that this is a legendary build. This is a build that I managed to complete district union or legendary. However, there are a lot of better build options out there for legendary content. This is a build that I personally wanted to put together and use to complete a legendary. Uh, uh, for as long as I can remember playing Division 2, uh, my, my favorite build to put together was weapon damage with high heals hybrid build i don't know why i just really like that playstyle. i like the 
all the survivability and all the healing you have but i was never able to actually complete any legendary content until i managed to put this build together you need to keep in mind that as i said there are much much better options out there some of them i've covered on my channel and they're going to be down below in the description in case you want to check more reliable legendary builds but what is also equally important is the play style is the knowledge of the player the movement being able to predict if you should fall back or if you should push all those kinds of things when you're playing on a legendary without a revive five which pretty much means one mistake is enough to make you wipe are pretty damn important because all of those things can be reasons as to why you end up dying it's not necessarily the build's fault or if you complete a legendary it's not necessarily the build's achievements i'd say the individual who is actually using that build and knows what he's doing is a, a very important part of the success so what do we have here we have first of all i'm going with the survivalist specialization the reason for that let me actually so you let's start with the survival specialization because it's quite important the most important reason as to why i went with this is the mender seeker mind the Mender Seeker Mind follows allies repairing their armor. You cannot use it if you don't go with the Survivalist. It's like the Artificer for the Technician. So I had to go with the Survivalist. On top of that, we get 10% increased protection from Elites, which is very nice. The last thing that's important about the build is the incendiary grenades which i found to be a good way of holding back enemies in in case they decide to be super aggressive with me but other than that as i said the main reason we're going with survivalist is because we cannot get the mender seeker mind otherwise now you might wonder why do you want the mender seeker mind now as you might have watched from the gameplay the mender seeker mind isn't like the fixer drone the fixer drone will be on top of your head and through constant heals on you. It will have a constant rate of healing you. The Seeker Mind is not like that. The Seeker Mind heals you more like the Catharsis, so to say. When you take damage, the Seeker Mind will pop out, will throw out a smoke, a cloud of healing. While you're inside that healing, you get heals. While you're not inside that healing, you're not getting heals. Now, what is very important to understand about that skill is that if it pops out the healing cloud and you step out of it and you get shot again, the seeker won't pop out another cloud. You have to stay inside the cloud. There is a cooldown between how fast the seeker mind can actually throw out heals, so to say. Now, the next question you might ask is why the Mender seeker mind and not, let's say, the chem lancer, right? Let me actually show you why. So, this is... How much I'm healing with Chem Lancer. So I'm going to damage myself all the way down. I have no armor as you can see. First of all, check the amount of heals that I'm going to get. And second of all, check the Kinetic Momentum. The Kinetic Momentum is not procced right now. Because each time I throw down a cloud, the skill goes on a cooldown. So that means kinetic momentum cannot work. So I'm missing 30% skill repairs just by having different type of skill. So we're going to start from that. Second, as I said, check the damage once again. So that's about half our armor, maybe a little bit more. I'm running with 1.3 million armor, right? What if we change to our Seeker Mind here? So, Seeker Mind, as you can see, Kinetic Momentum is active, right? It gets stuck, so we get 30% extra skill repairs just by that. And as you can see, the heals are pretty much the same Sigma Mind doesn't go on a huge cooldown as you can see the cooldown of it um, let me actually step out so the shooting range doesn't affect with my skills so the first reason is that 
kinetic momentum doesn't proc with the with the chem clouds or the chem hills, excuse me, the chem lancer. Second reason is of course the cooldowns. As you can see here, my Mender Seeker has a cooldown of 18 seconds, so that's with zero stacks on the memento that we're gonna talk about very, very soon. When it reaches 30 stacks, we have about 15 seconds cooldown. So that's super, super fast, in my opinion, compared to the Chem Lancer. The hills are about the same, and I feel like a, a Mender Seeker mine throughout those 100, 216 seconds that it has its duration is gonna pop out much more healing than the four or five chem lancers, how many we might have. So that's the reason I decided to go with the Mender. The same goes for the Fixed Drone. I didn't want to have healing skills like the Healing Hive, which basically restricts you to be in one specific area within that range of that skill, or that I will have to pick up, drop down again, pick up again, throw it over here, throw it over there. I don't want to have that stuff. I want to have two skills that are going to be constantly healing me. And the only time I will have to worry about them is by pressing the button to equip them. After I have throw them out, I don't need to do anything with them for the next 200, 200, 250 seconds. That's what I wanted and that's what I got. Now that we're done with the specialization and the skills, let's talk about the build. The most important piece, of course, here is the memento. The main reason for that is that we start with three core attributes, which all three core attributes are very, very important for the build. We have weapon damage, 15%, maxed out armor, 170k in one skill tier. We're running two skill tiers in total. We're going to talk about that in a bit. But yeah, three core attributes that we definitely need, all three of them. Moving on to the talent, the long-term buff will give me 30% skill efficiency, which translates to 30% skill haste for my skills, so I can get them faster. 30% skill duration, so they last longer, and 30% more skill repairs, which means that their skills are stronger. Then we also get 3% armor generation on top of that, which armor generation with the Fixer Drone and the Mender Seeker work like a charm, because even though those two skills are healing skills, it's not armor generation, in the game, the way those skills work, in my opinion, are very, very similar to armor regeneration. You don't have a big amount of skill repairs coming instantly. You don't have a very powerful hive which is gonna give you one charge and boom, you have all your armor back. You just have a constant regeneration of your armor, which I found to be very, very useful. And you can count on it to keep you alive. You can count on it that when something goes wrong, it will give you a pretty decent amount of heals to keep you alive. Now, the third part of the long-term memento buff, which we really, really need, is of course the 30% weapon damage. This build has taken a hit when it comes to how much damage it outputs, because we need it to invest in some skill repairs. So we're obviously missing some damage. We get those two extra red cores, in my opinion. We get that 30% extra weapon damage from the long-term buff of the memento, which is great. Now, when it comes to the short-term buff, when we pick up a short-term trophy, we're going to get 30% bonus armor, 5% skill efficiency, and 20% weapon damage. So, if the enemies are pushing you, and for whatever reason you cannot use cover to hide, then your next best bet, in my opinion, and what I did and saved my life a lot of times, was as soon as you kill one of them, pick up that damn trophy. It will give you 30% bonus armor to work with. It will increase your skill repairs by 5% and it will give you an extra 20% weapon damage which might be just enough to take down that enemy who is pushing you. Moving on to the second very important part of the build, in my opinion, that's the chest piece. And that's because we have kinetic momentum. This was a big decision. I didn't know if I should go with kinetic momentum or if I should go with a more damaged talent, so to say. But I decided to go with kinetic momentum and invest most of my attributes into critical hit damage and critical hit chance. As you can see here, kinetic momentum, and I told you that earlier as well, is going to offer to us 60% skill repairs. When in combat, each skill generates and stack while active or not on cooldown. Stacks increase your total skill damage by 1% and total skill repair by 2%, up to 15 stacks per skill, lost when on cooldown. So we have two skills, each skill gets 15 stacks, 15 times 2, 30, 30 times 2 equals 60. So we're getting 60 
100% skill repairs just by using our skills. And because they have such a long duration and because they have such a fast cooldown, 95% of the duration of the mission, you will see that you will have your kinetic momentum maxed out. Defenders AB obviously gives us the 10% assault rifle damage as well, which is just a nice bonus that it comes with its chest piece over here full red as you can see kinetic momentum moving on we're gonna talk about all my roles just a little bit first i want to talk about the brazos the Arcabus pieces that i have I have two of them because i wanted to get an extra skill tier from somewhere so my skills weren't running on just one skill tier and i thought myself that two pieces of brazos the Arcabus since speaker's holster is a pretty good option for this build i could get another one in here and get that skill tier, right? So the first piece is the mask, and the second piece, of course, is the Picarus holster. Maxed out armor here, 6% critical hit chance, 15% weapon damage. And then on the second brass, the Arcabus piece, this is my only yellow piece. As you can see, everything else is red. This is yellow, however. We have maxed out armor again, 12% skill haste, 20% repair skills. Now, Theoretically, you could go with just critical hit damage here as well, and there wouldn't be that much of a difference when it came to your skills. The 12% skill haste maybe gives you, what, one second faster cooldowns at best, maybe one and a half, I, I don't really know, but it doesn't really matter. So you could have this as critical hit damage if you wished, but obviously I cannot recalibrate because I have recalibrated my repair skills, and I thought to myself that... As it is right now, it's pretty decent. We don't have to worry about losing 12% critical hit damage. Who cares? Now, the last two branched pieces I decided to go with is the Cesca Vairoba and the Group of Sombra. The reason for that is I wanted to get as much critical hit chance as possible and as much critical hit damage as possible. I know that some people are going to suggest Fox Sprayers. I know that some people are going to suggest um, Contractor's Gloves. But let me actually show you why I didn't go with the Fox Spurs and I went with the Cheska Vairobas. So as you can see right now, with the Cheska Vairoba, I'm getting 14.3% weapon damage, 10.8% critical hit damage, 6% critical hit chance, and another 10% and another critical hit chance from the brand set. As I told you, my stats, 130 critical hit damage, 58% critical hit chance. One critical hit hits for 263. If I change that for this... It hits for 10k more, as you can see, 273, 274, so 10k more per hit. However, my critical hit chance just took a big hit, right? We're sitting at 48. So if I want to get back to that 60, almost 60%, we'll have to get two critical hit chance rolls. If we do that... Fifty five point one. So theoretically, we're going all the way up to sixty. So we're having two percent extra critical hit chance than we had with the previous setup, but we're hitting for two forty five. So in my opinion, Fox prayers for this build over here are simply not worth it. What could have been the best possible build would be. To not have a Fenris AB here, but to have a Cheska Vairoba with the exact same roles. And here have my Fox Prayers as well. However, I cannot do that personally. I don't have the pieces needed for that. The gloves, as I told you, are Group of Sombra. I want that extra 15% critical hit damage that I get from the brand set bonus. Then I also get another 12% on top of that. So we're sitting at 27% critical hit damage and on 6% critical hit chance with the Group of Sombra. If I got the Contractor's Gloves, it would be simply not worth it. I'm losing at least 15% critical hit damage and 6% critical hit chance in case my attribute roll is critical hit damage. If my attribute roll is critical hit chance, then I would lose 27% critical hit damage and that 8 or whatever percentage it is that we get damage to armor is not going to be enough to make up for that difference. Now, the last part of the build, let me actually show you the rolls just one last time. Armor, skill haste, repair skills, critical hit damage gear mode, critical hit damage gear mode on my memento as well. On the chest piece we have weapon damage, critical hit damage, critical hit chance, critical hit damage gear mode again. Picard holster, armor, critical hit chance, weapon damage. Cheska Vairoba, weapon damage, critical hit damage, critical hit chance. 
Gloves, we have 15% almost weapon damage, 6% critical hit stance, 12% critical hit damage. And then we have our weapons. Famas was not my first option. I would ideally get a Polisian 4 that has better range and accuracy. However, my Polisian 4 has killer on it and I cannot recalibrate that. And killer wasn't the talent I wanted to go with because it wouldn't be active all the time. So I said, okay, let's go with the Famas. I have it on expertise level 12. I have 15% weapon damage on it, 21% health damage. 10% damage targets out of cover, and then Optimist. Weapon damage is increased by 3% for every 10% ammo missing from the magazine. One of the best weapon talents in the game. You can either go with Optimist or Strained. I haven't done the math. I don't know which one hits harder in this build, but you can try both and let me know down below in the comments. The secondary is the classic M1A, of course. Rifle damage, critical hit damage, damage to armor, and boomerang. Pretty, pretty good stuff. So that's it pretty much. My stats, once again, 48.1% critical hit chance, which can get 60 because we're missing 9%, 0.9% over here. So that will push us all the way to 59. And then on this one, oh, never mind. We're not missing more. Okay. Yeah, that, that was bad math on my end. But yeah, we can reach 59% critical hit chance if I had this maxed out. And the weapon damage can be increased a little bit as well. We have 1.1 missing from here, another 0.2 and another 0.7. So basically about 2% extra weapon damage. And of course, my critical hit damage also can be improved in this role as well. And of course, then we have the expertise on the farmers, which can get another 10%. So yeah, as I said in the beginning of the video, this is not a build that I'm showing it to you because uh, I think you should definitely try it or because it is one of the best or anything like that. When I started my channel, uh, I said to myself and that was that still is and that still is the reason why I'm making these videos are not to show only meta builds are not to show only the best builds. It's to show different types of playstyles and builds that players can use and still be extremely successful. Because there is a very big part in the Division 2 community which seems to believe and they tell all the new players or all the returning players who don't really know what's going on in the endgame that you should only run meta builds. You should only run the best builds in the game. Anything else doesn't work. If you're running anything else, you're, you know, holding back your team. I'm not in a team. I'm playing all by myself. So I think that when you're playing all by yourself, you can use whatever you like. I'm trying to use these videos to give newer players the confidence, so to say, to go ahead and try out all their build ideas, whatever those ideas might be, however stupid they might sound. It doesn't matter. You can use a dozen different builds that a big majority of this community would tell you that, oh, there's no way you can use that in Legendary. You can use those builds in Legendary and still complete it. As I told you, down below in the description, there will be the best legendary builds I've posted on my channel in case you want to go and check them out. But in case you're looking for something different, in case you want to give yourself a challenge, and that's what I did with myself in this build, I said I want to give myself a challenge. I want to complete a legendary with a build like this one. So in case you're like me, this is a build that I think you're going to have lots and lots of fun with. And on heroic difficulty, this is actually... An amazing build to run when you're doing control points, bounties, missions. If you run this on control points, you're going to kill everything super, super fast. You're going to have super high survivability, 1.3 million armor, 3% armor generation, constant skill repairs on you. It, it, there's no way you're going to die. You're going to have tons, tons of fun. So yeah, thank you very much for watching, guys. Let me know down below in the comment section your opinion about the build. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Bye-bye.